Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Governor Sonwolu commissions Obashikumade Road in Ikorodu and Lagos State Government expresses readiness to construct fourth mainland bridge. This week's program is all about traffic management. We kick off with the Obashikumade Road, where the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu inaugurated the 2.5 reconstructed Obashikumade Road and the failed sections of the TOS Benson Road to ease vehicular congestion in Ikorudu. Now, Governor Sanwalu says the road has been upgraded from a single lane to rigid concrete dual carriageway to improve connectivity and then bring relief to commuting. Take a look. Obase Kumade Road Ikorudu is listed among the four set of projects embarked upon by the administration of Governor Babajide Sonwulu. The reconstruction work kicked off in 2020 to ease the burden of an experience by residents. Knowing the importance of Obase Kumade Road connecting about 20 communities in Ikorudu local government area, the Lagos State Government has completed a 2.5 km road network linking Ikpakodo, Ogolunto, Ibeshe, Igbogbo, and several other areas within Ikorodu Division. <laughs> Governor Babajide Sanwolu is here to hand over the road as well as the reconstructed TOS Benson Road, Ipakodu, covering a stretch of 500 meters in the same council area and is well received by the people. <laughs> The Special Advisor on Works and Infrastructure, Mrs. Aramide Adeyoye, who takes charge of all road projects, says the public outcry and perennial flooding on the axis, which often destroy the road, is now completely resolved. Over time, there have been several interventions to ensure that this road remains serviceable. The first intervention was in 2004, in July of 2004, through the federal government, when Mrs. Crown Plant Construction Company carried out rehabilitation works on the pavement. The second major intervention then was by the federal was by the state government in December 2004 when we awarded to Messrs. First End Nigeria Limited to the matter, the executive agency. Consequent about the conversion of a lighter terminal to a container terminal, the tender and increment in truck volumes and axle loads has caused a rapid deterioration of the pavement as well as a complete collapse of the drainage system that was occasioned by the low-lying nature of the road alignment. In 2009, when we came on board, arising from several complaints by the commuters on this road, on the condition of the roadway, coupled with the perennial flooding experienced by the adjoining communities due to the inadequate drainage system, the present administration decided to take the bull by the horn. This was after extensive engineering investigations and tests of the underlying soil by adopting a more expensive but more sustainable and enduring pavement as against what the flexible pavement that you had. And of course, we then decided to have a continuously reinforced concrete pavement for the reconstruction work. It's worthwhile to mention that the goal of this project was also to resolve the perennial flooding issues around Ogolonto, Omologede, Ipakodo, and the environs. This contract was awarded to Mrs. Arab Contractors Nigeria Limited in September 2020, while physical construction movement to site took place in January 2021. The second part, like I said, it's a two-in-one event. The second part of the event of today signifies the completion of Toss Benson Road. And to us, this is very important for several reasons, as it affirms our resolve as a government to allow our local engineers and the Public Works Corporation operate side by side the multinationals, thereby restoring their confidence and ultimately improve on capacity and competence. It's also pertinent to mention that a high standard of quality control and quality assurance has been maintained in constructing the road. And please be assured that the road will be no doubt serve its purpose throughout the design life. The traditional ruler of Ipakodo, the State House of Assembly member, and other residents of Ikorodu commend the good work, but appeals to the state government to complete other ongoing projects within Ikorodu. We cry out to you, sir, for intervention in saving this gateway road. You responded swiftly and promised us a lasting relief. May God bless you, sir. Today, you fulfill your promise to millions of people who apply this road as an access road to Ikurudu, Ikobo, Ijede, Ibishi, Imota, and even travelers to neighboring 
Ogun State and other parts of Nigeria. On this note, I make bold to declare that you and your amiable Deputy Governor, Dr. Obakwemi Amzaj, have both written your names in gold in the annals of the history of Ipakodo and Ipakodo and Ikorodu Division General. Mr. Governor, sir, permit me to use this opportunity to call your attention to the deplorable state of our roads across the back of the kingdom. The non-completion of other roads at Obutu agreed to Ishawo. Ibubu to Giliti, to Ewelepe, and other ongoing road projects within, within the Kodu Division. Similarly, I would also like to use this opportunity to request for the support of Your Excellency in the building of a new modern and befitting Sekumadi Palace. Now that we have a very good Sekumadi room leading to Sekumadi Palace, we want a befitting Sekumadi Palace. When the section of TOS Benson collapsed just immediately after the Sekumade Road construction was almost completed, citizens of Ikorodu did not know the difference between the two roads. As far as they were concerned, construction was going on and a portion went back. That was a trying period for some of us. And I must use this opportunity to commend Engineer Ramide and the Deputy Governor for the series of calls made to them and for them being on point at all the time, even at odd hours. They responded. That shows our government is interactive. That shows our government is responsive. Today, everything appears seamless because it was fixed to time. We thank you for this. Governor Sonwolu appreciates the people for re-electing him for another four years and assures them of accelerated development in Ikorodu and the entire Lagos. Today, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, is another demonstration of what purposeful governance is all about. It's about another definition of what true democracy is all about by ensuring that development touches every nook and cranny of our various locations in Lagos. And that's why we're excited that right after collecting of our certificates, we still have a lot of work to do. We still have a lot of projects to hand over. We still have a lot of things to show. And it was strategic. We did not want to come here on cheap politics and use it while we're campaigning that we want to come and commission because we want them to vote for us. No. You could have demonstrated and have shown that with or without, they are with us. And I want to thank them. And that's why I decided to come here first to show that we're partners in progress. This road, like KBC had said, is not only strategic, it's important to the entire community of the Kurudu Kingdom. MPA has a container terminal. Dangote has a terminal here. We have a big jetty terminal here. And from TOS Benson all the way to Ibeche, we have another jetty terminal at Ibeche. And so you can see that this is a very strategic artery road that opens up Ikurudu Kingdom, opens up Ikurudu Township, you know, into other parts of this division. And we're happy that Mesha's Arab contractor, within two years, have been able to complete this first class infrastructure. This has been a dual carriageway, completely rebuilt with first-class drainage infrastructure, with a deck on pile component also there, and it is joining with TOS Benson Road. On Agri Kishawa Road, we are about 60% completion, and we'll continue to push high tech to complete that road. We know how important that road is. On Ewelepe to uh, Beribe, that Arab contractor, you are the one there, uh -huh, that road is still very slow. You are just about 20, 20 something percent. You can see all the KBCs are here. I'm with you, I'm not with you. You need to move back 
to that side and ensure that you push that road for them. Right? Please, make sure you push that. They've given you all the applauses here today. Go back on Ewelepe, Beribe Road, and push it for them. Ibobobola Ahmed Chinubu is about 40%. It's also with high tech. Adamo Agun Agunfoye Road is about 35%. That is being done by another com contractor called Laralek. Ibobobayeku Road is being done in-house by Public Works Corporation is about 27%. So, Madam Works, you have a lot of work to do, ensuring, because when we went there, I remember Baba Bashonu talking about that road, that we need to fix and clean up that entire stretch. And we're also doing the major um, transportation infrastructure at the um, roundabout, you could do Italewa roundabout. Um, that one, it's about 55 to 60%, because that's supposed to be a major traffic interchange, you know, and open up the bus corridor um, in, that, in that whole space. And so I've listened, and you can see that that's why I'm not shying away to tell you what the level of road commitments are on each of those roads. And we will push and ensure that we come to this place like we've come here to come and commission and finish those roads. Street lights have been installed on the dual carriageway for easy movement at night. The road will improve free flow of traffic, reduce travel time for business owners and the general public. Now we turn our attention to the proposed fourth mainland bridge project coming up soon. The Lagos State Government says compensation will be paid to all those whose property will be affected by the proposed fourth mainland bridge project. This is according to the Special Advisor of Works and Infrastructure, Mrs. Aramidi Adioye who says the bridge will become the second longest in Africa when it's completed. Third mainland bridge is the longest bridge in Lagos State connecting the island to mainland. According to the State Ministry of Works, the third mainland bridge is said to be the busiest road in the country with over 180,000 daily vehicular traffic. The 10 kilometer bridge opened in 1990 by former President Ibrahim Babangida stretches from Oronshoki linking Apapa Oshodi Expressway, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and terminates at the Adeni Giadele interchange on Lagos Highland. The third Milan bridge, which is an essential part of Lagos daily commuting, is already caving in, requiring constant rehabilitation, which has been carried out by the state government. For over 30 years of its existence, the bridge is already losing its grip and perhaps needs an alternative. The Lagos State Government is already working towards that line of constructing a Fort Mellon Bridge as an option for residents on the island and mainland. Some residents are excited about the upcoming project. It's going to be a good project, a good getaway plan, plan for traffic in Lagos State because Tommy Lab is over, over burdened now. Then with that, Fort Milambi added a lot of traffic will be removed from that Fort Milambi and it will move us in movement in Lagos State very well. We pray it can be effectively so we know that. Having seen the draft, you know, that was presented to us, you know, by Governor Sawolu, I think it's an excellent idea that is passed due. Uh, we're hopeful that they will implement and get it under construction as fast as possible with the least amount of inconvenience to the population. And we're hoping that with the Fort Mainland Bridge, it will open up parts of, you know, uh, the east side of Lagos, as well as the Korodu Axis, you know. And we hope that the governor will provide accommodations for the people who will be displaced, but also open more opportunities for uh, private developers to develop that part of Lagos. So it is a welcome achievement, and we're hopeful that that will be just one of the other many bridges that Lagos needs so that there's always an escape route for us other than Third Midland Bridge. It's a good idea. It's long overdue, at least um, to be able to connect people from Faikurudu to other part of Lagos. I think it's a good thing. And it's also going to ease some of the traffic um, that we have. Of course, considering that Lagos is itself overpopulated and having to transit from other part of Lagos to the island and back, it's a good thing. 
The Special Advisor on Works and Infrastructure, Mrs. Arami Deadioye, explains the process of selecting a bidder for the project. We started this journey in 2019. How did we advertise? We ensured that it was an international journal, engineering news all over, worldwide. And we said we'll be doing this bridge process, bridge construction work in Nigeria. Um, a lot of people, that was November, a lot of people, ex well, they were surprised to say, this is the first time this is happening. But most times it happens under hush hush tones. You select who you think will be. It wasn't, it has never been. So that was the first test. The second test was the exact submission date. It was strictly done that even a lot of people missed out because they were one minute late than the closure time in the bid box. It was strictly, it was that strict. The third thing was every step of the way. We kept coming back to the public to say, this is where we are. We decided we would have a six-step process towards this bid, towards the closure of the Fort Milan Bridge. So the expression of interest is the first stage. The request for qualifiers, for questions, is the first, second stage. The request for post proposals is the next stage, which is the third one. The evaluation of the bids with the set criteria and guidelines will be the fourth one. The fifth one will be you getting a draft MOU Memorandum of understanding with the terms on it, what will be the concession period for how long will there be extra sweeteners in the corridor to reduce the thing? What will be the tolling price? Mix it with possible if forecast growth in, in volumes. Yes, you have this traffic now. If it grows to this one, so we did the financial viability and then agree on something. So, short MOU, do the draft and then get the assembly, the exco first to approve the, the state executive council to look at it. If it's okay, pass it on assembly, also looks at it, and finally we can have a final draft, a final agreement that we can all sign off, and then the contractor knows he has this agreement, and then we can break grounds and go to work. So that exactly is where we are now. We're about to get into stage five. At the end of stage five, it's a, construct, it's a construction. So that's essentially what this project has taken in the last two years. She also assures property owners will be affected by the Fort Mellon Bridge construction of full compensation. You also asked the vital question to say, where will this construction work be passing through and what will be the compensation plan? So it's intended as a 37 kilometer road. There's a road component and there's a bridge starting on the, on the, on the, on the northern side through the lagoon water into the mainland. So you take off from Ibramade Sonia. You go through Ajabado, Langbasa. You go through Bayeku, you come out at Konu, Konu Areko side, and then you take the back of Sparklight and come out at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. So at some point in time, we will be getting into the border of Ogun State. And so Ogun State is a stakeholder in this thing. But the good thing is, there is the Ogun State Development, Lagos Ogun, we have a joint development border commission. So you are able to, it makes this discussions um, a lot easier. And so they are, they, are, they are good stakeholders to this project and whatever happens here is good also for Ogun State in developing the joint mega, the border mega towns between us. You've also asked about compensation plans. So we have a resettlement action plan aside from the environmental impact assessment that you've done that the Federal Ministry of Environment has signed off. One of the reasons why this takes up to two years is in doing, getting your EIA certificate, you'll have to do a lot of studies over cycle wet season, dry season, and that spans across two, two, the, two, the two years. So you just don't do the studies one in one dry season, you have to go on to the next, the next year. So that's important. Um, the route alignments, there were 16 route alignments that were, that were selected. So in deciding this 37 kilometer long road, of which four and a half is the bridge over water and 32 is the road. Deliberately to reduce the amount of structures that will be affected the routes that were selected, you will see mostly they're not going through houses. They're going through this, the swamp. The swamp, just so going through the swamp to minimize. It's about the best that you can do. And that has reduced the, the structures that are affected to barely 800. One thing this administration has done is even with the red line and the blue line, to save compensation, pay the people, particularly the red line, pay people immediately. So this project is also one of the such that you will pay people. I'm sure you were at the commissioning ceremony to take off for the red line. You saw the checks that were displayed. Immediately, take and the move. So that's the kind of thing that you also have in this place. 
the construction period is expected to be at 42 months from the date of financial from the date of financial close 42 months so of course you will have in that 42 months early works you have initial early work site installation that can take four to six months but the real construction work is 42 months if you have a serious contractor you can actually that 42 months can be bridged depending on on the on the equipment uh, manpower deploy, uh, deploration you can work from two ends and you can bridge that Lagos stands will benefit a lot. You live in Lagos. And the three major bridges that go on the island, mainly Eco Bridge, Carter Bridge, and the Third Milan Bridge, the service levels are ranging close to F now. Every day when you commute, you are on bumper to bumper. So what that tells you is not rocket science. You need to expand your roads. Though I keep saying you can never outbuild enough roads for Lagos. What we need to do is to invest in our waterways and make commuting easier. Have an integrated, integrated uh, modal transport system. That is actually the solution to the gridlock. And so we need to be pragmatic. In a period where we're still doing this and we're still using road as an alternative, now, while we deliberately work towards our intermodal transport system, we need to be able to build parallel networks. The good thing I keep telling people is Lagos has a strategic transport master plan. You, you, you pick it, you know exactly where you're connecting. Since you have hit this serviceability, you need to do this one that connects to this so that you reduce the average daily traffic volumes on this to move on to take on to this. The studies have been done over time extensively. And it's about time now that even from the Lagos Development Plan 2032 to 2052, you will see exactly what we must do. It's stated there that as a must, we must build this, this sets of infrastructure to build in the, in the short term, in the medium term, and the long term as stated in that development plan. And the Fort Milan Bridge is one of them. It's no accident, it's no rocket science. That corridor is the next, is the next uh, Lagos. The central Lagos is built up, capacity-wise. And so you need to spread out on the Lagos east side and on the Lagos west side. And I employ people to get a copy of that development plan because it enables you to have insight as to what government is thinking and how we're thinking of developing this um, state. So I think um, that answers your question as to what would benefit the several. One thing is this, you will improve the socioeconomic benefits of, of well-being of Lagosians. You will indeed live better livable conditions of life. That's the, 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 the traffic in itself is horrendous and hellish, and we need not go through that. Um, it's unfortunate, the Third Mainland Bridge, several 30 years, 1990, it was open 1990, so 32 years ago, we built the Third Mainland Bridge. The Institute of Civil Engineers, they classify the Third Milan Bridge as one of those projects that radically changed the face of Lagos. The IC publication, 100 years of IC, Third Milan Bridge was recognized as one of those projects that radically changed transportation in Lagos. And I'm sure, so that was the worldwide, so that's something that they take statistics, and that's why Third Milan Bridge featured in that IC publication. The Fort Mainland Bridge is like an M ring, it's like, it's like Long Long's M25. It's like a ring because sometimes when you're going to Kurudu, instead of a long route that you take, you see somebody who is leaving Ireland or leaving Aja who wants to go to Kurudu, but because he has no other alternative, he begins to meander either whether he will go first, Osborne, come out. If you take from that place where you are, you hit it on the Fort Mainland Bridge, you need not go through. So you leave all of these other bridges and you face where you are going. The other thing it will do also, it will reduce the journey time of the Lagos-Abuja highway route. So your living conditions get improved, you improve socioeconomic benefits, you create alternatives for people, you have also to be able to real estate around there. So housing is also something that you will improve on there. You will also be able to make sure that your engineers, because you have, in the ultimate run, you will create employment for people. Because the construction work, you will need First, even the site to acquire, the people to employ, the cement that they will procure, the steel. You get so, uh, infrastructure is an enabler anywhere. The people who would, who would work around there will be employed. For the engineers who are under training in universities, so you develop a new set of, you're a new crop, you're able to train new sets of engineers, which is what we're lacking.
The proposed public-private partnership transport infrastructure development comes with a cost of about $2.5 billion, and Governor Babajide Sonwolu says the project will be flagged off soon. The next four years, by the grace of God, you will see accelerated development all around the city because of our commitment at ensuring that what we campaign on is the greater Lagos that is rising. And Ikurudu is part of that greater Lagos that is rising. In the next couple of months, we're going to be doing massive groundbreaking for the fourth mainland bridge. And you know that the fourth mainland bridge is coming all the way from Aja, and it'll be batting just behind you here. It's like an M25 road. And the first phase of it will be landing on Shagam Ikurudu Express Road, which will be the first phase, which is about 27 kilometers all the way from Lagos, all the way from Aja on the island. And it will be a major, major artery. The phase two of it will be from that junction all the way to Lagos Ibadan Express Road. So that is what we're committed to, and that is what we're doing. If we can get that done, which by the grace of God we will push and complete in this our second administration, then you know that we could do as completely open up to the entire world. The 37 kilometer bridge and road components, which will take off from Abraham Adesoya in Ekbe, connecting Ikurudu and ending at Lagos Ibadan Expressway, is expected to be completed in the next four years. And this is where we call it a day on this week's edition of the program Dateline Lagos. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. And till we come your way again next time, remember to please stay safe. Bye for now.